so you think your PC is good enough to run any GPU on the market? <laughs> <laughs> and the first 4K 240Hz mini LED display was just announced. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Kingston and their brand new Fury Beast DDR5. Kingston's Fury Beast DDR5 takes speed, capacity, and reliability to the next level, allowing you to get the best out of your new DDR5 capable system. With speeds up to 6000 MHz and increased efficiency, Kingston's DDR5 is the perfect upgrade for all high performance PC gamers. So if you're looking for some great looking high performance memory, be sure to click the link in the description below. So if you've been following my channel, you're probably aware that the RTX 3090 Ti is set to be announced very very soon and the 3090 Ti is actually now going to be the fastest GPU on the market just that little bit faster than the RTX 3090 but for those of you out there who are looking to purchase the 3090 Ti for personal use well you might want to take a second look at your power supply because it looks like this card is gonna draw a lot of power and I mean a lot because the RTX 3090 Ti just the founders edition according to leaks is supposedly going to be drawing somewhere around 450 watts just in its stock configuration and it could even draw even more power if Nvidia allows you to when you decide to overclock and that's not even taking into account any AIB models and this is what we got to talk about today because many people who are looking to buy an RTX 3090 Ti are probably going to try and buy an AIB model with an even higher power limit so they can try and overclock it and get the very best scores and if that's you well I got some bad news for you because your power supply might actually not be big enough yes even if you have like an 850 watt power supply it still might not cut it and even some thousand watt power supplies depending on what connectors you have might have some difficulty trying to run this GPU because yeah it's gonna draw a lot of power now the AIB model I want to talk about today is gonna be the RTX 3090 Ti Kingpin edition which is definitely gonna be probably the most powerful version of the RTX 3090 Ti and I know a lot of enthusiasts are going to be very interested in this card and this information actually comes from the Twitter user Harokaze and here's what he had to say about it quote EVGA RTX 3090 Ti Kingpin new PCB new shroud PCIe 8 pin times 3 to Nvidia 16 pin or 12 pin times 2 MSRP is a little higher than the original Kingpin the original RTX 3090 Kingpin could be end of life PCB is in final state but needs more BIOS tweaks and the original hydro copper water block doesn't fit so that's definitely unfortunate to hear that the original water block isn't gonna fit and hopefully they do end up making more water blocks for this model but I think what's most important about this is talking about how this could actually have two of the new PCIe 5 connectors which means that this card in theory could take over 1200 watts of power that's right you heard me correctly this card could if you wanted to push to over 1200 watts of power now realistically out of the box is it gonna be asking for 1200 watts of power I certainly hope not but what you could end up actually seeing is this card actually out of the box drawing well over 500 watts and requiring multiple 8 pin PCIe's into these two different PCIe version 5 uh, connectors so what you could end up needing is actually a minimum of four separate cables coming from your power supply to get this thing enough power so that you don't have to worry about any issues whatsoever so not only are you gonna need an incredibly you know high wattage power supply but you're also gonna need four separate connections coming from that power supply likely to power this thing you know maybe you'll be able to get by with three maybe that won't be too much of an issue but I'm guessing that each of these new PCIe 5 connectors are gonna require a minimum of two completely separate non daisy chain cables coming from your power supply so you're gonna need one heck of a power supply to drive this thing but I'm guessing if you're able to actually push like over 600 watts into this card it's definitely gonna be a really really fast card but wait there's more now let's go ahead and talk about this new 4k 240 Hertz mini LED display that supposedly is going to be coming out at some point in 2022 now this display is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8 and supposedly this thing will not only boast 4k 240 Hertz and mini LED but supposedly it will also be able to hit up to 2000 nits of brightness making this what could be an actually really great HDR display now is it going to actually be a great display that's something that we won't know until it fully releases but as exciting as this thing looks 
looks, especially considering that it's going to be mini LED and not the traditional LCD technology. Well, actually, guys, unfortunately, personally, I'm not so sure this is going to be a fantastic display. Now, it's definitely not going to be a bad display. You can't have this many good features on something like this and have it be bad, but I think it's unfortunately not going to be worth the money because I'm guessing that you're likely going to see this come in somewhere between 2000 and 3000 US dollars. That's right, you heard me correctly because the Odyssey Neo uh, G9 is actually $2,500 and I honestly wouldn't purchase that myself either. So I think that this display, unfortunately, just isn't going to be good enough for what they're asking. I think you're going to end up being better off with an OLED because not only are you going to get those better darks on the OLED display, but on top of that, in 2022, there's likely going to be a 42-inch OLED, which is a more reasonable size that is also likely going to be around that $1,000 price point. So spending basically half the amount of money or even less than half the amount of money and getting probably what's going to be actually a better experience overall is likely going to be the play because as good as this display looks, unfortunately, even at 240 hertz, I don't think it's going to be fast enough because with all these LCD based technology displays, there's always some sort of compromise you have to make. And for me, when you're spending over 2000 US dollars, a compromise is not going to be an acceptable option. And so I think what's going to happen is this is going to be an absolutely fantastic display when it comes to this uh, video visual side of things, but I, I'm just not so sure it's even going to be fast enough to take advantage of that 240 hertz display, which means that you're basically paying more and not actually getting anything more, which just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Now, if you're someone who wants something that's as close as possible to an OLED uh, type of experience, but you only have maybe 32 inches or something like that, then this might be your best option, but you do have to keep in mind, you're going to have to pay for this one big time. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think this is going to be a great display or do you think it's not going to be worth the money? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.